Hi, my name is Anindya Sen. I have been in the industry for some time now, around 18 years, and I've spent uh, time with companies like Microsoft and HP. And uh, most of the time I have spent in cybersecurity and how to really help organizations take the next step towards cybersecurity, what it should invest on, how it should shape up this uh, posture and you know taking them to the next uh, level currently i am with uh, qs technology as uh, the vice president for customer strategy and we would like to uh, discuss with you currently uh, the SOC solution or the SOC uh, as a concept which is there today hello my name is ashok and the co-founder and cto of qs technology and uh, today we will be discussing about the security operation centers. I have been into the cyber security industry from last 18 years. I started my career uh, as an operations engineer and then moved into the research and development when I was working in Checkpoint, which is a global leader in cyber security. And then uh, when I started QS technology, we were primarily handling the post sales part. So that, you know, uh, completed the entire journey of operations, product development, and post sales. And here in QS technology, one of the things which we are doing from like uh, uh, trying to maximize the already investment done in cybersecurity by our customers and partners. So, if somebody has already done a lot of investment uh, in cybersecurity, how to maximize, how to gain the maximum from your existing investment is one of the key areas where. Uh, I take a lot of interest while heading uh, the product development team and also I am uh, working on a program called Purple Synapse where we are going to create the next generation cyber warriors. So these are the people who are actually going to manage the next generation cyber security products. So these are the key areas where uh, we are involved in and we are going to discuss more in depth about today's topic which is security operation centers. Thank you. So on India, so uh, why don't you demystify this entire stuff uh, to our viewers, uh, you know, basically talk uh, how exactly you are going to explain security operation centers. Yeah, hi, thanks Ashok. Nice to meet you here. Uh, yeah, it is an essential task to define SOC and it has been there for some time now. But we really need to understand that what an organization means by SOC. Primary level, uh, there has been a knock for a long time, which is the network operation center. But security operation center consists of a few parameters because you bring in the extra parameter of understanding the security posture. So essentially, if I want to demystify SOC, I will break it up into three parts. Number one is the basic parameter on which you analyze the logs of the various devices which are there essentially if you for example if you have an incident happening in one of the devices and you have another incident happening in another devices if you treat it as disparate incidents then you don't really understand the correlation between them so this is the first part correlate events between the different objects which are there in your infrastructure it can be a firewall ips a server a transaction anything so we put them together through something called a SIM solution, SIEM solution, okay? But it doesn't stop there. That's the interesting part. The second part, which is essentially very important, is that how you put together everything on a saw, which is where integrations come in, which is where human capital comes in, which is the people coming in, the processes coming. So this is the second part of that. We need to define it. It's still in the building phase. And the last, but I will say the most important part is how you operate the SOC, how you run the show, how people are going to do a threat hunting, how people are going to analyze and how we are going to make it meaningful that you have a security posture for the company. So these three parameters put together really on a very high level is what is defined by the SOC. And as an organization, you know, if I, uh, if I put myself in the shoes of a CISO or for that matter, uh, from, a, from a boardroom discussion standpoint, I really want them to have a very compact relationship between the, these, these three things that we talked about. And then only really put together a very successful SOC that we are talking about. Thanks, Anandya, for a good, very nice explanation. I'm sure our viewers will be able to, uh, you know, relate to your explanation so next so so basically the way you have defined SOC 
is when you have multiple devices and when you treat the logs from device A versus device 2 separately, you won't get the entire picture. For example, a SQL injection happening on a web server is one kind of alert, one kind of attack, somebody is trying to do that. But when you see the user account used to attack a particular website is from an employee who has already left the organization. Now you bring these two contexts together and then you realize no, it's not normal or significantly abnormal. It is something you have to act fast, right? So this is what exactly like you know, in a very simple terms, I understood that yes, you have to bring as much data as possible from various devices so that you can make some sense out of it. That's really good. Thank you so much. Yeah, Ashok, I think you are dot on on that. But I have a question for you here. As a, as a, as a technical person having spent so much of time in the industry, uh, having seen that from both the sides, I would ask you that what are the top challenges that you see in establishing a SOC for a mid-size to, uh, for that matter, a, a very large enterprise as well? What are the top challenges that you think are that we needs to be addressed? So this is one of my favorite topics, Anindya. Thanks for asking that. So based on my experience working with various customers who are working on security operations and also few of the SOC service providers, there are two main challenges. There are of course there are many areas where like a lot of improvement and uh, people are working on that. But there are two main challenges which I have found out which are very difficult to achieve. Uh, many people are trying out and they are not able to achieve the full potential of a successful SOC because of these two reasons. The number one reason is the integration part. You can buy any product, but ultimately SOC is not about a single product or a single device. It's an entire, you know, the gamut of things like the you know, servers are there, security devices are there, the quality of logs are there, right? We are talking about automation, orchestration. So entire bits and pieces, when you, you know, you put together, it has to integrate and gel well. This is where I have seen most of the SOC fails. You buy a product, you try to integrate something, it just doesn't work that way. So integration is the key. And this is where, uh, you know, uh, our customers who are looking to start up their own SOC or a service provider who want to give SOC services to our, uh, you know, their own customers. I think this is of the key areas which they have to think about, the integration part. It looks easy, but trust me, it is very, very difficult to achieve the integration of various components when everything comes together how does it work so that is number one. Second area is i think almost everybody agreed to that fact is the skills of the engineers who are working on that so skills is very very important because SOC is leaving breathing a brain of security so it requires people of equal caliber right so you cannot have a product specific skill set which is required you need to have engineers or team of people who understand security almost length and breadth of networking little bit of red scaling like VAPT what you call or ethical hacking then they have fair understanding of IPS sandboxing automation and then the urgency of the overall alerts I mean you don't want an engineer who is not able to understand a difference between a phishing mail versus a SQL injection versus a web, web defacement already being done versus a DDoS attack happening on your server but server is still live it's not dead but slow you definitely need engineers who have that sensitivity to understand that so skilling is one and second is the integration is what i believe what i learned in these many of years of interaction with the customers and you know software providers ashok i think a uh, very interesting point uh, both are very relevant and uh, especially on skilling and integration is very related because you know as I have, you know, if I take my example as an engineer who was there from network security, when I went into the SOC uh, as, as a service or as a, as a subject, the integration skill set requires a different skill set altogether, right? We are talking about integration, we are talking about APIs, we are talking about certain codes, you need to really understand the basics of the certain, get to really understand the operating system. So it becomes really tough on that part. And yes, that skilling is very important, which we tend to ignore uh, because it's such a vast subject and, and, and uh, uh, we tend to concentrate more on the product. And yes, the product is important, but the, both the aspects are uh, very important and uh, it's a very good point that you touched upon. And uh, this, is, this, is, this is the single most important factor which has led to 
uh, I will not say failure is a very harsh word to use, but it has led to uh, not the optimized output which you expect from a SOC. Okay? And you really need to understand that what domain you are talking about, what are the security incidents which are there in that particular domain, finance domain to manufacturing domain, there are different aspects which we call use cases, right? And those use cases have to be done and these use cases are uh, technical use cases as well as process centric use cases. How you know you capture the different aspects. What might be a security incident in one company might not be the other. So these are the th aspects that we need to thrive upon and I think that it's a continuous improvement process. Good, Anandya. So uh, why don't you, let me ask you an interesting question. Define, can you define a successful, happy, SOC. I'm using this word happy because you know it has a different meaning for many people. Stuck. Hey, wow. Yeah. It's a tough question. I think that what you have touched upon is a very important subject in terms of the fact that what is good and what is bad and what is happy. I will define happy as the stage in which you really want to achieve. Uh, and I think what needs to happen is that SOC is not only monitoring, it is management. So if you are able to automate at least 60% of your functions, which is probably understanding a threat, taking action on those threats, this is eliminated as an automated process from the people which basically removes SOC fatigue. So this is the first happy part. The second part, which is there, is that the skill set of the people who are there are involved in actually threat hunting. So they really understand the analysis of the law. They understand packet analysis. They spend their time on that. And that is an investment worth doing. And I understand a lot of people are thinking about the subject of starting a SOC. And there is, of course, you know, there's the, in a lack of the better word, I'll say there's money to be had in that in that space. But you need to understand what is happy SOC, right? That is talk about a very nice um, you know, And I will say that you automate 60% of that. Let the skills of the individuals be do that level, that they are able to do threat hunting. So you basically make the organization a safer place because your actions are automated and the skill set of the people are taken care of which is called the reminiscent action which couldn't be automated you really go and do the threat hunting so this is the definition of a SOC which should be there and I am telling you we have experienced that it is achievable put together the right ingredients I think you will agree to that what is important that I thought that we should touch upon before we kind of end this is that uh, you know, I, I understand that we are doing a lot of things into this uh, space and uh, uh, what are the three things that you will, you will say uh, that we have embarked upon? I know we have been doing something on automation and other aspects, but if you could quickly touch upon the same, uh, the three things that we are currently doing in this space uh, and, and that can probably be helpful to a lot of people in the industry today. So one of the things which we are doing for the for the small organizations who are thinking to set up their own SOC or they want to enhance their existing portfolio like you know, from delivering the software to their own customers to providing some kind of SOC services is the consulting part where the customer or the partner has already decided what kind of product they want to going to have it but they want some kind of consulting to be done so that they can run a successful SOC. So one of the areas where we can work with our customers to help them establish a SOC. Second thing is again the end-to-end -end stuff. If somebody wants us to consult about the product, the process, and people, is another area where we can, uh, you know, engage uh, with our customers. And third thing is, of course, uh, as as we were discussing, the scaling part. So if 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 a customer is already having the, the sock setup, or they are pretty sure they have done their own research and they are pretty much okay to go ahead. Uh, with the security operation centers and they are looking for some kind of good people because as as we discussed the the good amount of engineers a good quality of engineers is definitely required uh, to run a successful SOC so this is another area where we are running uh, uh, research labs and we call it as purple synapse so people can go to that website and they 
www.purplesnaps.com they can check what all courses we are running and how are we helping create the next generation cyber warriors these engineers are trained on multiple skills not just one or two maybe it's a 14 15 different skill sets in cyber security and they are the engineers who are good to go uh, for anybody who is trying to establish a SOC or, or any kind of position for that matter. It was a good discussion, I guess, for uh, our viewers who want to know more about SOC. So how, how they can uh, contact us and how can we help them? What do you think? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, you know, for the viewers, yes, of course. Uh, we have an office in uh, Bangalore and Delhi and uh, we are based in Bangalore please walk into our office the details will be shared in this video uh, you can look at our website and you can look at the different courses the automation solution and of course this is not only about us but as the community uh, you know we really need to understand what this SOC is all about it was more to do with de demystifying uh, and uh, happy securing the world thank you thanks Ashok thank you so much Anandya thank you <laughs>